Sony Pictures Animation is often recognized for their theatrical feature films, but a little less known is their entrance into animated television shows. Unsurprisingly, they made a few based on their popular movies. Set before the events of their respective films, I think both series have done a solid job of replicating the creativity and fast-paced humor of their big-screen counterparts. I've long felt Sony Animation has been really good at taking simple ideas and taking them in wild and inventive directions, and these two television cartoons continue that tradition. The first movie turned series was Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, showing Flint Lockwood as a teenager try out all sorts of inventions. Produced and animated by Canadian animation company DHX Media and aired on Cartoon Network, the episodes often involve him creating something and the resulting mess that happens because of it. He is joined in his escapades by his best friend Sam Sparks, and I know what you're thinking. How is Sam in the prequel series if they met for the first time during the events of the movie? I wondered that too, but the show is able to hand wave this in the first episode, when Flint reveals if she ever leaves Swallow Falls, he will invent a machine that wipes her memory. A tad convoluted? Sure. But it's at least one way to retain one of the central characters from the movie in the TV show. There are a few other interesting differences too, like Earl being a school teacher before becoming a policeman. And the mayor also serves the high school principal, and he apparently has a son? The Cloudy of a Chance of Meatball show reminded me of 90s cartoons based on movies. Remember the Ace Ventura animated series, or when Timon and Pumbaa got their own cartoon show? Continuity more or less went out the window, but the intent was more so to have fun with these established characters. Cloudy follows along those lines, and the writers come up with a lot of creative storylines for Flint, Sam, the mayor, and the other Swallow Falls citizens to partake in. The humor succeeds more often than not, with its fair share of slapstick, odd non-sequiturs, and funny one-liners from the cast. There's also a heavy emphasis on referencing Swallow Falls' love for sardines, which surprisingly leads to multiple funny stories. The characters lend themselves well to a 2D appearance, with the animators especially having fun with Flint and his rubbery arms and body movements. Even the backgrounds are fun to look at, including the town square and Flint's treehouse lab. They even throw in the sentient strawberry from Cloudy of a Chance Meatballs 2 as a neat little easter egg. I also have to commend the voice acting. None of the actors from the movies reprise their roles, but their replacements more than handle the task. Katie Griffin does a spot-on impression of Anna Faris as the voice of Sam, while Sean Cullen is able to capture the mayor's pompous attitude. The show does a really good job of showing the wacky personalities of the characters, with Sam essentially acting as a straight woman to the wild events that occur. Some of the biggest laughs come from her deadpan reactions to Flynn's strange remarks, but they have a good dynamic going on. For those wondering about Phil Lord and Chris Miller's involvement, they are credited as executive consultants, while Cloudy 2 co-director Chris Pern is listed as a story consultant. I dig the Cloudy for Chance Meatballs movies, and I think the show succeeds as an enjoyable extension that more than does the characters justice. With Hotel Transylvania the series, the principal focus is on a younger Mavis as she learns how to run the hotel. This show was produced by Nelvana and aired on Disney Channel? Interesting and surprising choice, but okay. Gendy Tartakovsky is not involved in the series, but I think the showrunners still capture the zany spirit and humor of the movies. One of the things I love about the films is the fast-paced animation and the inventive and funny ways they play with the familiar monsters. The show retains that, and I think shifting the attention towards Mavis and her monster pals allows the writers to come up with new scenarios. Dracula is mostly absent, which is a little surprising, but the addition of his strict sister Lydia leads to a humorous dynamic with Mavis. Mavis's friends get some laughs, although the standout is an excitable blob named Wendy. There's also a house with humans living nearby the hotel, which leads to some really funny storylines of the monsters trying to understand their strange customs. Where was this waspy family during the events of the movies? I guess they probably just moved away. The animators did a really good job of adapting Hotel Transylvania's characteristic animation to the small screen, with some especially hilarious reaction shots. They take advantage of the monster's different abilities, which makes the visual gags even funnier. Mavis especially sells many of the more physical jokes, and Bryn McCauley makes for a worthy replacement for Selena Gomez as her voice. 
Episodes will also occasionally have the characters break out into song, which adds a further zippiness to the show and make for fun little interludes. The quality of the animation is not too surprising when looking at the talent involved. Robin Budd, who has directed every episode of Hotel Transylvania, also directed several episodes of the Beetlejuice animated series, so this is not the first time he has turned a visually inventive and highly creative hit comedy into a television show. Like Cloudy, I have a genuine fondness for the Hotel Transylvania movies, and I think Bud, the writers, and the rest of the Nelvana team deserve praise how they've translated the material. These two shows are just the start of Sony Pictures Animation producing television shows as they have a mix of established properties and original ideas being developed. Unsurprisingly, the success of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse has led to Lord and Miller signing a deal with Sony Television to produce animated shows based on the Marvel characters they own. Sony Animation is adapting Anthony Bourdain's graphic novel Hungry Ghost into a show, along with a revival of Aaron Magruder's popular adult swim show The Boondocks. They will also be collaborating with the studio behind Robot Chicken on an original series titled Super Bago, which will combine stop-motion animation with live action. A few years ago, it was announced Sony Animation would be making a new Ghostbusters animated series called Ecto Force, and centered on a team of Ghostbusters from the future. It was actually supposed to premiere last year and then nothing, so I'm not sure what the status on that is. In the meantime, we have these two very funny and incredibly creative animated series with endearing characters and humorous situations to tide us over. If you are a fan of the Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and Hotel Transylvania movies, and unsure about how these cartoons would translate their premises and characters to a new medium, I'm happy to say they're more than entertaining diversions. See you next time.